today we're gonna talk about a very serious one. People today face a growing need for medically safe implants. People have lost their lives due to malpractice of the past uh, processes that produced these implants. So now we will discover what was changed to make this safe. Many processes have been used to create these medically safe implants, but none has been more studied intensively than chemical vapor deposition. So come and let us discover this process. So today we will we will learn more about CBD through the eyes of a person who has done it for almost 10 years, who has studied the process. She is a doctor in material science and engineering, graduated from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with an award of summa cum laude. Let us welcome Dr. Kelsey Win V. Uh, CBD is one of those things that people think they know nothing about. In reality, they know at least the basics of it. One common example product is soot from partial oxidation of wood. In CBD, a chemical reaction takes place between the gas and the chamber and the heated surface itself, forming a product. That's the basics of it. The actual process, however, is somewhat more complicated. And complicated it is. First, you need the gases, which are a mix of the active and inert, coming in at a specified rate. Then you need to ensure that these gas molecules reach and are absorbed into the substrate surface. After that, chemical reactions with the substrate should take place and then the byproducts dissolve and evaporate it. That's a lot. You may have a vacuum, of course, where your reactions take place. That's generally for better proteins. Then you also have to worry about your gas flow and your temperature, things like that. There are a couple of models, but those are generally extremely specific. One model discusses only the results of one reactor type that accounts for mass transport. Another discusses a method which uses lean and fine particles. Hello again, and now we will welcome our second special guest. He is a renowned expert of the CBD process. He is a technician from Little Shell, Philippines. Let us welcome from Batangas through Sky, Mr. Wancho Camacho. The products are extremely worth it. High quality dense and pure materials are produced from this, with good reproducibility. More than that, it doesn't rely on line of sight and quotes, even complicated figures well. Plus, the basic method is reasonable in cost. Of course, it's hard to get rid of some of the gases, and advanced CAVD are expensive. Hmm. For film and coating applications, God rather just certainly outweigh those limitations. We're talking here about semiconductors, dielectrics, metallic films, anything that can make use of a very uniform coating specific surface properties within the boundaries of the CBD process. And CBD isn't just one process, but a family of processes. CBD is classified to several broad groups. For one, there's by reactor type. This is either hot wall or cold wall, depending on whether or not the wall is heated as well during the preparation process. Then you can also classify by operating pressure, atmospheric pressure or low pressure CBD. They can also be classified by what is used an extra energy source, which gives plasma-assisted CBD and laser CBD. Other methods include metal organic CBD, uh, photochemical vapor deposition, chemical vapor infiltration, and chemical bean epitaxy. Each of these have their own uses and main advantages. APCVD, for example, is simple and fast but has a good chance of contaminants. In the semiconductor industry, APCVD, LPCVD, and PCVD are used. Low temperature oxides are made using APCVD. While high temperature oxides, polysilicon and silicon nitrides, are made using LPCVD since it has excellent purity and uniformity. PECVD is used mainly for insulators and nitro preservation. Precursor gases are silin and tricarosilin for polysilicon and a variety of combination of silins and oxides for silicon dioxide formation. Silicon nitrides are made using silane and ammonia. A typical apparatus will consist of the following systems. The gas delivery system, the reactor chamber, the substrate loading mechanism, the energy source, the vacuum system, the exhaust system, the exhaust treatment systems, and the process control equipment.
regards to delivery system, it handles the delivery of gases. The reactive chamber and the substrate loading mechanism are self-exploratory. It's where the reaction takes place and where the substrates are loaded in. The energy source provides the energy, usually as heat, which gets the precursors to decompose. The exhaust system uses the byproducts of the chamber, while the treatment system converts these to harmless compounds if necessary. The process control equipment monitors process parameters like pressure, temperature, and time. And did you know that there's still another use for it? Ah, CVD it can create synthetic diamonds by allowing carbon atoms to settle as a crystalline layer. In a sense, it's more like coating the diamond to a substrate than making a new one. Uh, the process is still under study, but can be used to create large, to coat large areas with diamond films. So now we have learned that CBD process, the CBD process is very, very, very important. And that concludes the first and actually only episode of Rated. Again, I am Viola Fleming, signing up. Are you and your partner so sweet to each other? Did he just take your relationship to the next level? Is the ring he gave you so extravagant that it is questionable? Well, you could be a victim of AGS or Artificial Gold Syndrome. For all we know, the thing you have is just coated with a gold-colored coating. You want to know how that's possible? Here's why. Some metals when mixed with nonmetals, emit a whole new different color unlike its two parents' compositions. In this case, when titanium and nitrogen atoms react and bond with each other, they form titanium nitride, which can easily be mistaken with gold because of its gold color. This compound was first discovered by Friedrich Schwaller in 1849 and has been since used as a coating to jewelries to mimic gold. How that's possible, you ask? Here's why. The most current technology of depositing titanium nitride to a jewelry is through a chemical vapor deposition process known as plasma-enhanced chemical vapor deposition, also regarded to as PECVD. In this process, plasma, an ionized gas atom, form radical reactive enough to form best quality films into a substrate at a low working temperature. Dr. Henry J. Ramos, a professor at the National Institute of Physics in the University of the Philippines, Diliman, patented a titanium nitride deposition process using PECVD called COTIN, titanium nitride plasma coating. This process utilizes magnets to orient the produced cylindrical plasma into a sheet. You, you also want to know how that's possible? First, electrons are introduced into the chamber the same time argon gas is introduced. The result of mixing of these two particles inside the chamber result to an argon plasma, which will be used later on in the process. Due to a potential bias, charged argon plasma move forward into the chamber. The charged plasma is then pushed into the mixing chamber due to a potential bias. The cylindrical argon plasma will soon meet the samarium cobalt magnet located near the chamber, turning it into a two-dimensional sheet. The plasma sheet then heats the titanium metal, thereby liberating titanium ions on the sheet itself. Some of the titanium ions then deposit on the surface of your substrate. At this point, nitrogen gas is introduced into the chamber. This nitrogen gas eventually disperses inside the chamber. Some nitrogen gas are able to hit and react with the titanium ions present at the substrate, thereby creating a titanium nitride film. And with that, your engagement ring is produced. But don't be sad, because your ring will probably last longer than your marriage. Titanium nitride is known for its superior hardness and inertness at normal environments. Perfect for leaving a ring-shaped scar to your boyfriend's cup. What are you waiting for? Have that ring checked and know if your fiancé is a keeper or a gunner.